Here on RGT85, we love classic Castlevania games. They're just awesome to me. Whether you're talking about the original Castlevania style of games with Castlevania 1, Castlevania 3, Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, or Dracula X or Rondo of Blood on the PC Engine CD. There were so many great classic Castlevania games. And then, of course, came along Symphony of the Night, which introduced a Metroidvania style to the game that we saw in subsequent releases on the DS. There have been so many great Castlevania games, but for every great Castlevania games, it seems like there's been a lot of bad ones. Games like Castlevania 64, the Lords of Shadow series. I never liked those games. I never really wanted Castlevania to go 3D. And I never played a Castlevania game that was in 3D that still felt right. It wasn't like Mario going from 2D to 3D where things still felt natural. The Castlevania games always just felt a bit awkward, I guess you would say. And of course, Konami sucks. And they'll never make a great Castlevania game again because they really don't know what they're doing anymore. They're more interested in doing things like pachinko machines and making as many crappy Metal Gear games as humanly possible. But a game called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night came along and it looked really interesting to me. It was the spiritual successor to the Castlevania franchise. Now we saw another spiritual successor with Mighty Number no. 9 and Mega Man and that didn't turn out so great. So I was holding back reservations on Ritual of the Night because I wasn't sure if it would meet my expectations, if it would meet my standards. Well, one of the things on the Kickstarter campaign was of course a retro style side game. And if the Kickstarter got to a certain goal, it would get this retro style side game in the Bloodstained universe. So this goal was met and a game called uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon was announced. And when I saw the trailer for this game, I was like, Arr! like it was perfect. It looked so good. And I thought to myself, you know, there's really no way this is going to meet my expectations. As a diehard Castlevania fan, as an old school Castlevania fan, something's going to come have, have to come along and mess this up, right? It looks just too good. It looks like they nailed everything down. But then I thought to myself, you know, Inti Creates is doing it. And Inti Creates, of course, did a great job with Blaster Master. So maybe this game will be good. Well, folks, I have been playing Curse of the Moon all afternoon. And buy the damn game. Just buy the game. Just buy the game. If you want to hear more, we'll get into more. And here is my review of Blaster Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, which is just, God! Hey, RGT85, hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! So Bloodstained Curse of the Moon has you playing as a character named Zengetsu, who is basically a demon hunter with a vengeance, and he wants to take down a powerful demon in a castle, and he must go through these Castlevania-looking levels in order to do it. Now, the game is a bit short. There are only five levels in the game, but we'll get into sort of repay value and other things as we go along in this review. Now, the first thing you notice when you boot up this game is just how damn good it looks. Like, it looks like what Castlevania 4 would have been on, like, maybe the master system. I think it looks a little bit better than the NES games, but it sort of has that Shovel Knight sort of aesthetic to it. It's definitely retro, definitely maybe not 8-bit though. I don't, couldn't see this game running on the NES, but maybe like a 12-bit sort of thing. But the colors are very vibrant and crisp. The enemies are all very creative, and the character models themselves look very good. As you play throughout this game, you definitely get a Castlevania feel. There, of course, are sub-weapons that you acquire by knocking down lamps, and you get different hearts to basically build up your second secondary meter so that you can use these secondary weapons. Now, as you progress through the game, you of course come across boss battles, and the first few boss battles are where you get extra characters, because much like in Castlevania 3, this game allows you to play as different characters. You don't just have Zengetsu, you also have Miriam, who is the lead character of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, you have an alchemist named Alfred, and you have a Alucard character named Gebel or Jebel. I don't really know how to say it. We're going to call him Gebel for this video, though. And basically, they play how you would expect them to play. Miriam plays a lot like a Belmont would, with a high jump and a whip mechanic, and of course, she can do a slide. Alfred is the alchemist. He has a really weak attack, but he has very strong magic, and he has a very small life bar. And of course, Gebel, I think we said we were going to call him Gebel. We're going with Gebel. Gebel is sort of the Alucard character. He could turn into a bat and fly around the level, so you pretty much know what to expect. 
effect. It honestly feels a lot like if Castlevania 4 was designed for the NES, like I said, because it's definitely like the spiritual successor to Castlevania 3, how they took that formula and improved upon it. But whereas a lot of games just rely on nostalgia to sort of, you know, transverse these things and get people to pick them up, there are games like Sonic Mania that come along that take the base formula, that take the stuff that we all love and then improve upon it. And that is where Curse of the Moon really, really shines because it's not just a nostalgia trip. It actually improves upon a lot of different things. It, For one, it is very, very easy to switch between your characters in the middle of battle. And it's very smart to do that because each character has their own life bar. So if one character gets weak in life, you can just transfer to another character and use that character. When you're going through and looking for different sub weapons, each sub weapon is dedicated to a character. So if you're playing as one character and you knock down a lantern, you're going to get a sub weapon designed for that character, not for another character. So it's good to switch back and forth between characters. There will be times when it seems like it's kind of challenging to defeat an enemy, but if you switch to a sub character, it all sort of makes sense. It almost has like a Mega Man feel to it in the regards of where if you go along the boss path to make it so that subsequent bosses are easier by getting different abilities, that's sort of how this game feels like because when you're playing as these different characters, there are definitely situations that favor them. One thing I really like about the game though is right when you start the game, you start to notice one thing. There's a lot of branching paths in this game, and there are a lot of branching paths in this game. Now, of course, when you start a brand new file with Zengetsu, you cannot access these areas because he either can't jump that high or he can't slide under things. But when you beat the game, you can go back and play through it with those original characters, all four of them, so that you can access these different areas. Because honestly, like I said, the game isn't very long. It's about five levels long, and of course, you have boss battles at the end, which are pretty tricky. Some will take you a good chunk of time, but it can be beaten probably in an hour and a half to two hours on your first playthrough and then subsequent playthroughs will of course take less time but of course that sort of leads itself to speed runs but the real fun is just going back and playing through the levels in different ways with different characters because even when you're playing as certain characters there are branching paths there's a little guy that tells you sort of the path that you should go on that's the shortest path but there are longer paths that have different things that you should definitely check out so I like that about the game it automatically has replay value and if you beat it and if you beat it in another way you also get another mode that we're not going to talk about i'm going to leave that mode for you guys to discover but there are three different modes that you eventually have to play through this game with and what's more is when you beat the game zengetsu actually gets new abilities so it's definitely worthwhile to play through the game again like i said the graphics in this game are just fantastic they look so good the background has some great scrolling all the enemy sprites are awesome the boss battles are huge and just so cool and so varied and of course you have to to learn their boss patterns and that's what makes the game fun is sort of memorizing these different boss patterns and learning what you have to do and which character is the best to use against these bosses the music the music is fantastic listen to this little slip it I absolutely love the music in this game. It is finely crafted. It sounds just like a Castlevania game would sound, but it still has its own unique charm. It's definitely music that I would listen to outside of the game. And it's just, wow, wow. I didn't expect to be this blown away by Curse of the Moon, honestly. I thought it would be a fun little diversion. I thought it would be just, you know, a side project, maybe even a throwaway project. But with Inti Creates involved in this project, I should have known more. I should have expected more because Inti Creates is slowly becoming Honestly, one of the best retro style developers there is. When you look at a game like Blaster Master Zero, when you look at what they've done with stuff like the Azure Striker series, Integrates is on top of their game. They know what they're doing. And it's pretty much to the point now where if an Integrates game is coming out, you need to pay attention to it. Now, this game, uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, will be available on the Nintendo Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One, 3DS, and Vita. I do not care what you buy this game on. You can buy it on any platform you want, buy it on Steam. I don't care. This game needs to sell well. Because honestly, what Inti Creates just did is pretty much say, oh, Konami, you don't know how to make a Castlevania game anymore? Don't, don't worry, we got it. Because this honestly is one of the best Castlevania games I've ever played. I don't even care. 
I do not even care about a Castlevania sequel anymore. You know what I want a sequel to? I want a sequel to Curse of the Moon. I like these characters. I like these different paths. I like this gameplay style. There's a lot of stuff to love in this game. It is a well-crafted love letter to fans of Castlevania games. It's pretty much the Sonic Mania of Castlevania games. It is a well-crafted love letter that takes upon the original formula, adds a few new things, gives it its own sort of direction, and makes it an absolute masterpiece. Yes, a masterpiece. I honestly have no complaints about this game. One thing that maybe some people will notice is the game is a little less challenging as a traditional Castlevania game. Also, there is a difficulty uh, adjuster that you can use to where it doesn't knock you back when you get hit. There's more life pickups and stuff. Basically, a casual mode, and that may turn some people off, but honestly, I'm all for it. I want as many people as humanly possible to experience this game because this game is something very special, and I feel like a lot of people are, over, are gonna overlook it, so that's why I wanted to do my review as soon as possible. I wanted to get the word out about this game. I didn't even get a review copy of this game. I saw that Nintendan, who's a great YouTuber, channel make sure you guys check him out uploaded a video of this game and I was like how did he get it and I noticed that it was available on the Japanese eShop so I went on playasia.com I bought a Japanese eShop code and I bought this game for ten dollars and honestly it is the best ten dollar game I have ever played it is a fantastic game I cannot say enough positive things about it and honestly the second I'm done with this review and editing and while I'm editing this review I'm gonna be doing another playthrough of this game because it's just that damn good so castle or Castlevania. Castlevania is dead. Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, Reign Supreme. This game is fantastic and I highly suggest you pick it up. I want to see it on the top of the PlayStation charts, the eShop charts, the Xbox charts, the Steam charts, all charts. All charts must have Curse of the Moon. All charts. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on notifications. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the gameplay that I've shown of Ca uh, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. And thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you really enjoyed it, be sure to check out all the links in the description box down below. We got Patreon, t-shirts, social media, all sorts of fun ways to keep up to date with the world of RGT85. Thank you guys for 100,000 subscribers, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Later. RGT.